everyone. Happy Sunday, and I hope you're having a beautiful April day wherever you're at. Uh, this is my friend Kathy Blickenstaff, fluist, and the last time we played was in a library last March in 2020, so this is kind of our backyard celebration of being able to play together again. Um, and hopefully you're all having your own many celebrations as everyone kind of, you know, as hopefully everything gets a little bit better in our world. So, um, Today we're going to be playing some Irish tunes together, and um, we couldn't find a lot about each individual tune. So Kathy's going to share a little bit about some different instruments and um, a little bit about some of the individual tunes. Um, I did a little bit of research on Irish harp, which is, this is not an Irish harp, this is a concert harp, Western concert harp. Um, and um, so there, you know, it, it sounds larger and a little bit fuller than an Irish harp might. And I guess there are, you know, there's quite a history with Irish harp. Um, if you might have, might know, the Irish harp is the official emblem of Ireland. And I actually have a, a dear harp student, Kira, who um, sort of inspired me to kind of do this because I was talking to her mom. And at some point she asked whether I do some Irish um, music because their family is Irish. So um, Kira, uh, shout out to you. And so the, the Irish harp is the official emblem of Ireland, and which actually brings Kira to playing the harp. And there's a large history of harp players in Ireland. Um, the harp that would have been played in the 10th century um, until the end of the 17th century uh, was a, a heavy, a very heavy harp. And it was small, smaller than this, and it had brass strings, um, 30 to 50 strings. Ours is 47 strings. This one is uh, 46. It lacks the, the bottom of string. Um, and those very heavy uh, brass stringed instruments were carved traditionally from a single log, um, a willow uh, typically. And they would pluck with their fingernails, which was interesting because we never pluck with our fingernails. And so it was always, to me, striking that like Latin American harpists play with their fingernails. So I was reading today, oh, they also plucked with their fingernails to make sort of like a bell-like sound. Um, now modern, so then um, modern harp in Ireland is um, not instead of the steel, which we, we also in the concert harp, we have um, steel strings at the bottom, but their uh, modern Irish harp is made more of guts which is our middle section on the concert harp. And it's no longer made from one log, and it's uh, usually larger than the traditional harp. And um, there's a few names for Irish harp. Celtic harp, Gaelic harp, Clarsock, and maybe even Clear Seach. Um, and a little bit more of the history, which I found interesting, and then we'll um, start our concert. So the Gaelic harp was revered in the Celtic culture in the 12th century, and so kings and chieftains had their own residential harpers. And um, unfortunately, they didn't usually write down their, their music. It was more of an oral tradition. Then around the 16th century, the Gaelic harp became a, a symbol of the resistance to the crown in England. So then harp playing became banned, and the clearsock and the Irish harp almost became extinct. A century later, um, fortunately, there was a musician and a folk music collector named Edward Bunting and he attended a harp festival in 1792. He wrote down the Gaelic harp music that he heard um, at that harp festival, and he thus preserved the music. So really interesting culture, and um, I know there's quite a few Irish harpists now. It kind of makes me want to go and travel to Ireland at some point when things are all doing better and I want to go on a plane. So anyways, uh, we're going to start here with the, the keys of Canterbury, and I hope you enjoy this fun and um, fairly short program. Thank you. 
one of the oldest documents of secular music. Um, it has been traced back to the early 1300s, and of course we all know it so much as the, uh, the, the hymn, What Child Is This? But it was also very popular and sort of a standard back in Shakespeare time, Shakespeare's time around the 1600s. Um, he used it in many of his plays and he referred to it in many of his plays. So Greensleeves has been around <clears throat> for over 700 years.
instruments today. Obviously the first one was flute, and then this is my piccolo, <coughs> and this is a, a fife. And I'm gonna demonstrate for you in this next piece the difference between um, a fife and a piccolo, which you can definitely hear that there is some difference, but I wanted to show you that you can obviously see the difference in the fife, which is what they used years ago in this traditional kind of music. The fife is gonna give this kind of music a little bit of more of a, an, eth an ethnic feel. And of course there's holes in it instead of the keys. Um, there's only six holes in a fife where there's about maybe 12 keys. You can't see them all here in a piccolo and then there's even more on the flute. So you're a little bit limited on what you can play on the fife unless you're a very uh, good fife player, then you can use, um, you can use, you can vent the holes to make different pitches come out. <clears throat> and another thing I wanted to say about Irish traditional music is a lot of the times, um, some of this music seems maybe a little bit sad um, or it might have a little sad tone to it. And a lot of that is because some of this music is written in not major scales. It's written in modes. And so that's where the fife can be handy because the fife doesn't play a complete scale. Um, it plays in, it, ha it plays on a certain kind of mode or it plays in only the scale that it's um, made in, unless you're a good fife player, then you can play all kinds of notes. <clears throat> so I'm going to play, I'm going to start off and give you a little example of what this melody sounds like on the fife, and then I'll finish up on pick.
These Irish tunes have, you know, really strong sense of rhythm, but then on top is this, you know, beautiful melody. Which, if um, I were to ever delve into more playing, I'm sure I would, you know, want to sing some of the. I've heard a lot of um, Irish music where people sing, but Kathy is our singer today. She's our vocal line, mm -hmm. so we didn't need a singer today. Um, but I'm just going to play the melody one time through the Valley Lay Smiling, and then one time through with the, the harmony as well. And then we'll play our finale. And um, thank you so much for coming again today and um, listening to our uh, collaboration. It's been, you know, it's been great having people come to listen to me when I've just been practicing by myself in my living room during COVID. But um, it's been such a pleasure to have Kathy here this afternoon to just, you know, play with somebody else for for a change and hopefully this next year 2021 we'll get to do a lot of that so anyway uh, stay safe and healthy and hopefully this year gets better and better
last final shout outs. Thank you, Kathy, for coming and playing. And thank you, Yvonne, my husband, for being the technical support every concert. So again, this is Tinker's Air. <laughs>